deliver you to the courts, and you will be flogged in the synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them. The gospel must first be preached to all the nations. When they arrest you and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but, whatever, but say whatever is given, given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but it is the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. And as we look at this today, it should serve as a reminder to all of us that in reality, this world is not our home. We are simply aliens and strangers here, and that we are involved in a great invisible warfare. There is spiritual warfare taking place all around us, between God and between Satan, between light and darkness, between the truth and between error. And it will all come to a cataclysmic conclusion in the time of the tribulation. We must not be preoccupied with the things of this world. We must be setting our mind continually upon the Lord in heaven and not upon the things of this earth. If we are living for the things of this world, we will not be prepared and we will not be ready at the time of the fulfillment of these things. And so he begins with this call for the alertness of the believers. We need to have our spiritual eyes open. At the time of this fulfillment, believers will be delivered up to the government officials and will be publicly flogged and beaten and whipped and many of them unto martyrdom and unto death. No wonder, he says, be on your guard to be ready so that your confidence is strong in the Lord when such a time of tribulation would come upon the scene. He says, for they will deliver you to the courts. The very same word is used in verse 11 when he says they will hand you over. What we obviously draw from this is that it will become a crime, a capital crime, to be a Christian. And it will become a crime worthy of death to hold to Christian values in a godless society. And religious freedoms will be removed as it relates to Christianity. Mark it down. There is no other implication to draw from this. To be a Christian and to stand for Christian values in the last day will be a punishable offense in the courts that will lead even to death. And do, not, do we not see before our very eyes the changing of a culture and the changing of a society before our very eyes? It would not take very much more altercation in the times in which we live than to see these verses fulfilled in the immediate future. The one thing that will not be tolerated in the last days is to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this should sober up every one of us here today that I need to set down deep roots in the Lord Jesus Christ before these hard times come if I should be living in that last generation. The real issue that the world has with us is Christ. The real hatred is towards Christ. And we who bear the name of Christ, and we who preach Christ, and we who preach the exclusivity of salvation in Christ alone, and we who preach the Ten Commandments and the morals that are laid out for the family in the home, 
we will become public enemy number one in the world and the reason will be ultimately because of Christ. Christ is the stumbling block. Christ is the rock of offense that causes the world to be offended. And because we simply speak His message, they will come and arrest us. The American people, I only want their very, very best. And I love the people, and God helped me to see that He loves all the people in this world because He died for all. And then uh, just uh, a few days ago, 16 SWAT team members rushed into a Christian home in Arizona. Uh, it was a Christian house meeting, and these SWAT team members, uh, they handcuffed that pastor uh, of that place. They uh, incarcerated him for 60 days. Uh, they did uh, give him uh, a suspended sentence and a fine of several thousand dollars. And beloved, you are now classified with terrorists. If you are a true Christian, please know you're classified with terrorists. Now, I do have a story from a country where real persecution is taking place. We have not experienced it here yet. This is hardly uh, persecution, but let me share this story with you from North Korea. A group of Christians was discovered in North Korea. They had worshipped God and his son Jesus. Their children were with them. The adults were told by those who had captured them, if you do not acknowledge our dear leader as God, and if you do not renounce Christ, your children will be hanged. One of the children looked up at her mother. What would she do? Earlier that morning, 28 other Christians had been bound and taken before a screaming crowd of North Koreans. The guards made it clear, if you don't deny your Christ, you will die. The mother thought of her child, but she could not deny her Lord. The other Christians quietly made the same decision. Their God was real. The North Korean guards again shouted, deny your Christ or we will hang your children. The children looked at their parents. The parents loved their children, but they knew there was an eternal heaven for them. Praise God. They could not deny their Lord. One mother leaned down to her child and whispered with confidence and peace, today, my love, Today, my love, you will be with me in paradise. I will see you in heaven. All the children were hanged. The adults who were still bound had to lie down on the pavement. A large steamroller was brought, which was used to flatten the road. They were given one more chance. The guards told them, if you give up your Christ, you will live. If you don't give him up, you will die. The Christians thought of their children in heaven and started to sing softly. As the steamroller started to roll over them, crushing them to death, they were singing, More love, O Christ, to thee. More love to thee. More love to thee, my God. And you see below... Our houses, our furniture, our libraries, our churches, everything they're taking away from us. They're taking away from us our own clothing. They're taking away from us even our names. Every prisoner, if he was a more important one considered by them, was taking away his name and given a number. And he had not, he was not allowed to tell even a warden what his real name is. They feared that the warden at a glass of wine might betray the secret who is in prison to a friend of his. So we were given numbers. The one prisoner number 5,833, the other prisoner number 9,221, and so on. And uh, older prisoners do, did, did not remember their numbers, and then they were beaten because of this. I had the advantage to have a number very easy to be remembered. I was prisoner number one, so it was easy to be remembered. But they're taking away from us everything, even our names. We had nothing. We were nothing, they mocked us, they did with us what they liked. They opened forcibly the mouth of Christians and spat in this mouth. 
and they did worse than spitting in the mouth. They trod you under their feet. We wear nothing, and we had nothing. There was another one who said, I am nothing, St. Paul. And when he wrote this, he was free. He said, I was nothing. Three ways. First, he will touch their economy. He'll touch them where it hurts in their economy. And if that doesn't work, if that doesn't turn God's people to repentance, then he said God will touch their ecology. And then you have floods and pestilences and, if, you know, hurricanes, a drought this year that's covered a huge part of this nation, tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis. Lastly, though, he said, God will raise up a nation to come in and invade them. That is exactly the judgment that God is pronouncing here, and that is the judgment that is soon to come upon this nation and upon North America. God sovereignly raising up enemy armies to invade a nation, and America, this nation, believes she's too strong for that. That she could never, her, her military force is too strong for that, that that can never happen. I want to tell you tonight that this nation sits on the brink of utter destruction. That she is ripe for the judgment of God. She is ripe for the judgment of God. Judgment is at the door. America will not have a godly president to save the day nor the nation. National leaders and politicians will become even more corrupt. Muslims and other antichrist groups will be God's instrument of judgment. And what is most surprising of all probably is that this holy remnant, and she is found all over the earth, gathered in all different kinds of congregations, but this holy remnant that has seen the King, has come to know Jesus, and is following Him wholeheartedly, she will be persecuted by a people who profess to be Christians. A, a, a churches, if you will, persecuting them. Because they're not pledging allegiance uh, to patriotism or anything else but the Lamb of God. And she will be arrested, we will be imprisoned, hated, beaten, and even executed in this nation. And I want to tell The church in America is going to suffer so terribly. And we laugh now, but they will come after us, and they will come after our children. They will close the net around us while we are playing soccer mom and soccer dad, while we are arguing over so many little things and mesmerized by so many trinkets. The net even now is closing around you and your children and your grandchildren, and it does not cause you to fear. You will be isolated from society as has already happened. Anyone who tries to run for office who actually believes the Bible will be considered a lunatic until finally we are silenced. We will be called things that we're not and persecuted not for being followers of Christ, but for being radical fundamentalists who do not know the true way of Christ, which of course is love and tolerance. You'll go down as the greatest bigots and haters of mankind in history. They've already come after your children, and for most of you, they got them. They got them through the public schools and indoctrination and the university and indoctrination and then you wonder why your children come out not serving the Lord. It's because you fed them right into the devil's mouth. So little by little the net is closing around and then it's not little by little. Look how fast things are going downhill just in a matter of weeks. Matter of weeks. But at the same time, know this. Persecution is always meant for evil, but God always means it for good. And is it not better to suffer in this life to have an extra weight of glory in heaven? You must settle this in your mind. This is the one thing I want to say over and over. Do not believe. Down through history, you have a wrong idea of martyrdom and persecution. You think that these men were persecuted and martyred for their sincere faith in Jesus Christ. That was the real reason, but no one heard that publicly. They were martyred and they were persecuted as enemies of the state, as child molesters, as bigots, 
as narrow-minded, stupid people who had fallen for a ruse and can contribute nothing to society. Your suffering will not be noble. So your mind must be filled with the Word of God when all people persecute you and turn on you. And if the Spirit of God in common grace pulls back and you see even your children and your grandchildren tossing in the lot that you should die. This is no game. You want revival and awakening, but know this. For the most part, great awakenings have come only preceding great national catastrophes or the persecution of the church. I believe God is bringing a great awakening, but I believe that He is raising up young men who are strong in trust in the providence of God to be able to wade through the hell that's going to break loose on us. And it will be on us before we even recognize it. Unless, unless in God's providence, He is not done. He is not done. Now note, this is, this is not silly talk. Apart from a great awakening, these things are going to come upon you. Be ready to lose your homes, your cars, and everything. 